I'm Chad Jacobson with Crooked Stave, and I'm here with your craft beer and brewing tip of the week. One of the best ways to dive into brewing farmhouse beers and talking about the practices and the principles in the brew house is to talk about some of the beers that we've brewed at Crooked Stave. As we set out, each recipe really is defined in the beginning by the malts and the adjuncts that we used. Starting with our 4.2% Saison, we knew that adding oats or something that we're gonna create mouthfeel, that we're gonna give life and really extend that period of time that the beer was able to drink with a smoothie sort of silky mouthfeel. Some people can choose oats, some people can choose rye, some people choose spelt. All are great ingredients in the beers and I actually recommend building recipes that use some or all of those. So distinguish themselves from each other, VA and Surette, and we arbitrarily kind of chose two different levels of ABV for them. That was very historic, VA being the field beer that would be drank, and Surette being the provision saison that would be drank in the evening. We also wanted to change the way the mouthfeel was and how those beers were then consumed. VA, we opted for a higher level of oats and spelt into that beer using a pale malt as you would, and then using oats and spelt in around a 10 to 15% range, was able to kind of give a silky mouthfeel. We also know though that it's gonna leave sort of residual maltodextrins in the beer for a longer extended fermentation over time as that beer aged in oak. So it's a five grain Saison. That was an aspect to where we wanted some rye in there, we wanted some wheat in there. We also love the characteristic of oats and spelt. And then also with the malt, we wanted to be able to give a little bit more richness, so a little bit of Munich added in it. Those were enough to distinguish the beers differently. At the end, a lot of the finishing processes are gonna be the same. So we'll talk about the secondary fermentation in barrels. But in the brew house, it was really about how we process those malts and how we were able to get a wort that was unique to each one. A lot of the processes in the brew house are gonna be dictated by your brewery and what you're comfortable with. Whether you're able to do a decoction mash or a single infusion mash, or you have a mash mixer, that'll depend on whether you're doing steps. Those steps can have a big impact on the final beer. For instance, if you're able to do an acid rest, so you're able to bring out ferulic acid from the malt, those are gonna add four vinyl guanacol, four vinyl phenol into the beer. Those are something that can be recognized as a novel characteristic in those beers. You think about with Hefeweizen, where that yeast has the POF positive, so to be able to create that phenolic flavor, the same can be done with various farmhouse Saison yeasts, and as well with Brettanomyces. Brettanomyces is very unique because it will actually take the 4-vinyl glycol, 4-vinyl phenol, and produce 4-ethyl glycol and 4-ethyl phenol. Again, something that's unique about Brettanomyces and using in these beers. For us at Kruger Stave, we are a single infusion mash ton. We are mashing in a little bit lower than we would for some of our other beers, and then looking to raise that temperature during sparging. Mashing lower is gonna help us see really good enzyme utilization, and we're gonna really be able to dry the beers out. It is characteristic of Saison to be dry, to finish fermentation much lower than you typically see in your other beers. Britannomyces, bacteria, they are gonna help in those secondary fermentation and in that attenuation. And from that primary fermentation, it's not unheard of to see a finishing Play-Doh of 1.5 or sometimes even lower just from the Saison Saccharomyces yeast strains themselves. Britannomyces will continue that secondary attenuation. If you wanna learn more about brewing farmhouse style beers with Britannomyces, click the link below.